Minute approval has, uh, uh, these minutes are at the meeting of August 7th. They were sent out last week, I assume. That, are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Approval. Uh, approval. I'll second that. It has been moved. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next, the second item on the agenda is public comment on non-agenda items, and we want to limit that to three minutes. So, if you have any comments on anything that's not on the agenda, I don't think anyone signed up. To, so, we'll go to the next, the third item, which is enhanced services proposal by LSSI. Regional Manor Manager Dana 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 Braccia of Braccia. Okay. And actually, I'm going to start. Um, this is in response to our meeting in August mm -hmm. when the board asked that the staff come up with a proposal of enhanced services for this fiscal year. So um, I went back and talked to my administrative team, branch managers, department heads, and took input from staff. And we considered all the input, and, the con and we also looked at the input that we received for the last seven and a half years from the public, friends, groups, and our stakeholders. And the consensus from the staff and all the other input was that we the greatest priority was to provide additional hours. And that has been the top request since 2007 when we reopened. And then the priority regarding the, ex the additional hours would be to add those to the branches that do not, did not have extra hours added by other community or organizations. So that information came together and we also built in um, some extra IT information technology that we would need to support that and business office infrastructure. And then that all of that information um, I handed over to Dana and Dana and I discussed it and came up with a proposal. And so Dana's going to talk about that proposal. Yeah, and this is also, you know, with the rest of our team and LSSI of uh, looking at, as Kim said, um, staffing the buildings. And, and one thing to note on the proposal, um, this is to have the buildings open. It's not adding additional hours to add programming. Let's say, for example, story times, um, outreach activities, things like this. Again, the priority on what you're seeing here is just to add those, those hours. Um, and then in some cases, it might mean adding an additional day. It might mean extending hours on a certain day. So there was a lot of, of uh, let's say, the, the details of what does that mean in terms of staffing. Um, it also includes some behind the scenes sort of infrastructure type positions that we think about. For example, IT support. Um, in your proposal, you'll see we're, we're recommending uh, this with this amount, we could go up to 78 additional hours. Um, that means more support sometimes in collection development, other pieces of the operation that, that oh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. My computer is, is updated. Um, so if you want to walk through, as Kim mentioned, you know, I think one of the, the most important pieces was that feedback from staff, uh, friends, public of where is the greatest need. But then we also laid on top of that um, information such as what's the community population? What's their current circulation? And, and a little bit of that is what comes first, the chicken or the egg? If you have more hours and typically your circulation goes up, so it's not always just a hard number to look at, 
Um, and also we looked at sometimes where is the geographic location of the, of the branch. For example, in Jacksonville, that tends to be a branch where a lot of people return materials in transit. It may not be the library where they're primarily checking out. So even if we saw somewhat higher circulation figures there, we had to temper that with the data of, okay, what's probably the actual real community usage? Is it a way station? Is it um, actually being used there? So we can go through here. I went ahead, we, we have this in alphabetical order for you, um, but the groupings tend to be uh, Ashland and Medford, uh, both now going to 40. So that keeps Ashland consistent. It brings Medford up by 16 hours. And you can imagine, you know, this is an 85,000 square foot branch. That's quite an extensive uh, addition to staffing in, in this area. Um, the next kind of grouping would be Talent and Central Point. Um, Talent was already at 36 hours, but Central Point, when you look at their circulation, their population, um, was an area we thought we need to really add some growth there as well. Um, the next, let's say, grouping is Rogue River and Eagle Point. Those would then go to 28, 28 hours. And again, Rogue River was already at 28. Um, Eagle Point um, then would move to 28. And as you'll sort of see a pattern here, um, we didn't want to go into scenarios of 26 hours here, 25 there, 24 there, because the other piece, and, and Kim will touch on this, is sometimes that communication and PR to the public of when is your library open, it's nice sometimes to package that together. These branches are open these hours, yep. you know, here, otherwise it gets a little too confusing and, and off the board. Um, so then continuing on with the, the grouping, we have Jacksonville at 24, which is a gain of four hours. Phoenix now moving from 16 to 24, which is a gain of eight. And White City going from 22 to 24, which would be a gain of two. Uh, the next grouping is Rouge, which would go from 16 to 20. Shady Cove going to 20. Gold Hill and Applegate also going to 20. And with Applegate, that's a, a little bit larger jump. They gained eight hours compared to Gold Hill at four. But again, when we looked at um, that circulation, that's 20, over 22,000 circulation, which is right up there with the Gold Hill, which is at 25,000 in circulation. Um, then the last uh, two are Prospect and Butte Falls. Um, again, going up from eight to 14. And, and in a case like that, I mean, it's probably a, a less expensive branch to bring hours you know, into in terms of staffing requirements. But there's also that point of where does it make the most sense? I mean, if you were to bring those two, for example, to 20 hours, does the community, it's almost oversaturation of library service. So there, I mean, because Kim and I really sort of, as we were looking at the formulas to say, would that make sense to bring them up? But our feeling was on those two, at, at this point, we want to see a little bit more growth in attendance and circulation. Um, and if you think of this sort of as a, a phase one, meaning if you were to add these hours, see the reaction of the community, start to see new attendance, circulation figures, then phase two would be, you know, ideally can you bring in Ashland and Medford up to 60 hours? Or could you bring, I mean, so it's, it's kind of slow grouping, or it may be in a phase two, these hours are working, but where the community focus would be is more programming, more outreach, more embedded librarian services in the community. And that would definitely be a, what, what is the, a priority of the board? You know, where would you like us to focus our areas? So this right now is, you know, a proposal of we, we need more, the community has told us and staff has told us we need more hours, you know, but we can adjust depending on if there's different priorities for the board. Um, and then in terms of when the actual rollout would be, this is for a six month proposal for uh, January to June 2015. So something to keep in mind is if you add hours, is this something sustainable long term? So let's say an annual cost would be about a million dollars. Um, and there could be some potential escalation, you know, when, as the contracts are renewed, because you don't want to go to the public and add a bunch and then have to take it away six months later. So really thinking about, is this a priority for now and also into the long term? I, I don't think any of these hour additions are excessive, meaning we were, we were conservative and not over giving hours, but we really felt like the hours we had at each location now would support that community demand and what we would sort of expect to see in increased usage and circulation. Um, the other piece to think about, let's see, is the, the, in terms of scaling up. You know, if, if, if we could do this tomorrow, that would be ideal, but you have to think about it. it means adding new staff, training staff, doing new schedules, sort of really roll it out to the public in a very positive way 
um, you know, talking with Kim and her team, they felt like by January, you know, all the, the ducks could be in a row. We also have to educate the public, um, you know, about the new hours, change some building signage, um, you know, th that type of thing. I mean, if, if there was a huge desire to move that date up, you know, we could talk about that and look into that, but I think where the comfort level is right now would, would be a, a January rollout of this. And of course, if you added, came out, came on earlier, that would add to the cost as well. So trying to keep that within the, the budget amount we were given. One of the things that I'm wondering about is uh, how many new people versus increasing the hours of our current staff would be a question for me. Um, we it did not at this point go into necessarily that level of detail, meaning we know how, you know, the FTEs that will be required, but we'd really have to look at scheduling. So in the case of Prospect and Butte Falls, right now I think it's a single staff person covering both of those, you know, and, and we need to take into consideration their individual um, work requirements. Somebody who's part-time may or may not want to go to full-time, or somebody may say, I do want additional hours or not. So it's really one of those situations where once you know this is where we're going, then that comes back to more of an internal assessment of who do we have, who wants or could use more hours, where do we bring in new staff, um, that type of thing. So it's you know, quite a few, again, moving parts to, to restaff a, a situation like this. I guess one of my goals would be to, to know about that by the time we meet on the 22nd to get a feel for how many new people we're going to hire versus increasing hours for existing staff. That would be something I'd like to know as soon as we can know it because that's our data actually begin to talk about how the board wants to work with this. Well, and, and again, it's hard to have, I would say, a hard number on that, meaning there's going to be some ebb and flow, and that's one of the things with your LSSI contract it's really an overall personnel contract, meaning as a company, we, uh, we determine, okay, what, what does it take to keep these buildings open, safe, serving the public with current operations I, and with additions? So. We also have a lot of people who work 20 hours mm -hmm. a week and they want to work more. And so one of my goals is to, is to provide that if we can. Well, and that would be a situation, too, when you're looking um, <coughs> at a staff member. You know, right now, this is a, a cost-efficient model. Um, if a priority at the board is to change that model and there's funds available, um, because you start to look at different types of situations, insurance situations, you know, and if, if the priori priority of the board is to um, escalate those areas, that would probably be an additional conversation. But really, a lot of times, again, where we are right now in our contract is uh, a more cost-efficient model and we, we look at all the scenarios to provide the best possible service um, using that scenario. So that, that could be a, a, a discussion, um, perhaps not necessarily for this proposal, but for looking at a, a future contract renewal of, of what would be the priorities of the board. However, I do think, correct me, uh, that what we would do is go into the branches and s talk to the staff and say, how would we do this? What hour would you be adding hours to op current days? Would you be opening another day? Do you want extra hours? Mm -hmm. How many hours would that be per staff member? I mean, we would definitely start at the ground level mm -hmm. okay. and branch level and mm -hmm. move. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, that will affect benefits, of course, mm -hmm. in terms of. So we. That's why I thought if we could know it fairly soon, that would be useful to us. I'm not sure that we would know all that by the 22nd. Correct. I mean, this is really um, almost even, a, 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 say, a work in progress. As you, one thing is a house of cards. If once you have this branch figured out, would impact the next, the next. Meaning, depending on how staff are deployed, how floaters are deployed. So well, based on what you know today, mm -hmm. Dana, we uh, would. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Um, and I know you have to have time to work with the county. What, how do you how how would you see when you would be able to come and say, this is sort of the structure that we have pretty well wrapped up? I mean, when would the board finally have some information about that? Um, I mean, it might be more of a situation of a percentage of new hires. I mean, what can we support internally versus percentage of, of staffing that would be you know, new hires that we need to bring on? 
but again, the actual figures were more of um, a, a general overall, the way our contract is presented, is a, a certain dollar amount um, is used then to staff the buildings versus a granular staffing level. And if you just remember, this would be an amendment to the existing mm -hmm. county contract and not our own a contract. Exactly. And so perhaps some of the issues you have may be addressed at a, in, in a longer term when we have our own separate contract. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, we have to honor what's in the county contract. Right, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, question, um, Kim, in your preface, you had in indicated that there wasn't necessarily an emphasis on programming. It was really more of an hours. However, additional hours does lead to additional programming. Um, I'm thinking in terms particularly of our early childhood education initiatives, um, babies, wobblers, story times. Um, it was, is there any idea that with this will come additional opportunities for those programs in the libraries? Well, right now the babies and wobblers programs are funded with ready-to-read grant money, so we don't fund this with our regular budget. So I don't see really additional early literacy programming. Um, we might, programming in general at the branch level, I, we could probably ramp up. We have more hours, we can do more programming. But I don't see us adding new programs, you know, series of programs. Would you continue to look at those sorts of things as needing to be grant funded? Um, it, at this level, mm -hmm. yes. And it, I, in my mind, th this proposal is about hours mm -hmm. and, and bringing the branches up to some equitable hours and hours that the community needs. Next, next year, the next cycle, I would see more of uh, looking at outreach, programming, um, early literacy, what are our strategic plan goals, and you know, ramping up those kinds of things. I think this is really primarily getting the libraries open. Okay, thanks. I have a question. When we open, you know, the additional 78 hours, but I'm going to pick on the little one here, Butte Falls, look with six more hours. Then what would you expect their circulation to do? I mean, at what point do we say it's not cost efficient to add more hours in this place because we know for for that same cost of six hours we could add one more hour maybe in Medford branch and get 20 times the yeah. circulation. And I, I know that they're, you know, it's a beautiful little spot and it's real remote and they need services there. And so how do we know if we've overstaffed, it would be one of my questions. Mm -hmm. I, th I think in this scenario, again, we, we had a more high level look, um, again, using like population circulation. But in those cases, as Kim talked about, or, or, or had mentioned to me uh, before, is that is a one public space for people to gather. And um, having that common gathering area is one of the strategic priorities right now um, of the library. And that might be whether it's for things like a book discussion group or a public meeting. Um, and that's where, uh, I'll turn back there, you know, we, we look at the hours. It's, and we may want to, for example, if we go forward with this proposal, look at what are some other assessment measures we want to see. How much, what's the door count, for example, or, or what are, how many public meetings are happening or things like that. So in your mind, especially ones, if there's ones that are a little bit questionable to you, you know, what does success look like? You know, and set some targets. So in six months, when we're ready to do an overall new contract renewal, those pieces would come into um, the discussion as well. But and that is one. a good question about View Falls. It's the only library that does not have a public meeting room. So it's difficult to do public meetings at that library. They do have a, a community another center. community center. Yeah. Um, that we've really, expanded or increased our circulation at Prospect. We haven't seen Butte Falls do that. Is it because of the hours or because we haven't spent a lot of time working on that? That's okay. what mm -hmm. we need to well, decide. Part of it is that you have a library who's been at Prospect for quite a while and, the, and a library at Butte Falls who's been there very, a very short time. And I think those things have to go into the 
formula to. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Jill's question is a good one about whether that's too many hours in the default. Well, it's not just of, no, of okay. questioning the hours. Yeah, of what place do you know that you've got enough hours to meet the need, but not too much hours? Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that balance is. Not just, I pick on Butte Falls, but that could also be as sad as Phoenix or even Ashland. You know, mm -hmm. more hours, is it going to really increase our readership, or is it not? And sometimes, though, you, you look at when you have such a limited amount of hours, you're serving just one demographic. Like if there's no evening hours, if you have working parents, or, you know, I mean, so, so it could be we, we start to see when we add hours and add an extension either earlier in the morning or later in the day, all of a sudden that could open up an entirely new audience for library services, even though that go hand in hand with the marketing piece as well. So it's, it is one of those things that's not a crystal ball, mm -hmm. but just um, historically where we tend to see hours or tends to be in a, a gain in, in usage, um, just because all of a sudden there's more availability. Do you see the um, public education part of this um, as costing any significant amount that wouldn't be covered by the existing budget? We did have that conversation of how much more. I think, though, um, it's something initially we could absorb into our current operating budget. You know, again, we really wanted to focus on making sure we have the hours. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we do um, have a lot of uh, avenues such as social media that there's not a, a huge extra, you know, um, additional cost to that type of thing, but there wouldn't need to be reprinting sometimes the brochures, uh, print collateral, um, signage, you know, that, that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, but, but I think again, that right now, we felt confident that we, we could go ahead and absorb that. That's what we're currently doing. It may mean, for example, shifting some of our other marketing priorities, but for us, Getting people into the door, the doors is a is a huge piece. I think most of the libraries know when they need to add hours. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think they've given you that information already, and, and uh, when they're pressed and when they have some slow, slower time. So I'm sure all of that can go into whatever you're meeting with them. You know, gives us. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussion about. Um, in certain locations, we need more morning hours because our class, we can't get the, the schools there. We don't have the hours for class visits or um, enough hours for preschool story time. So we need either to shift or add morning hours. We also, and, and also um, we've had feedback from certain populations that want to be able to come early in the morning. And we don't have those early morning hours in the current schedule. And then on the opposite end, families or working people who want to be able to come in the evening, we don't have that many evening hours. So this would spread the, the hours out so that we could serve more of our population. So tell me about how, if, if, Geographically, if Ashland is open or closed on Friday, Talent then is open. Is, are you still doing those kind of? What would your be plan for like Central Point and Medford? They're real close to each other. Do you have one open one day and the, the we day would, the other? We closed? would review that the entire okay. system schedule and uh, start over. I okay. think as far as that goes. I mean, some communities, if we're only adding four hours, it would either be one additional day for four hours or two, you know. Two, two hours. Two hours exactly. here, one hour here. It would depend on um, what the branch manager and the feedback that we've gotten from our communities in the last seven years. And our branch managers know that it's slow from this hour, on this hour, so maybe we need to shift this hour to this hour. Or, you know, we, we have to do a lot of... Um, review and and try to come up with the best possible situation regionally, like like you indicated, Ashland, Phoenix, Talent. What would Medford, Central Point? How would those all impact each other as far as ours? When you did this proposal, what about other auxiliary costs? For example, if I assume that if Medford Library is open more though it is sort of open those days because of RCC, I understand that. Perhaps the utilities would be more. 
but maybe they wouldn't be in this building because it's but it's close to the park, but it's sort of open. But that's maybe not a good example, but maybe in Central Point, for example. Uh, as open. far as utilities, we, that would be okay. a county. Okay. Uh, and so none of this took in that there might be more additional utility costs that come along with that. No, but the, the libraries okay. are open for community meetings any day of the week. At okay. It. Okay. So I wouldn't expect an increase. Not much. No. Additional janitorial, perhaps, though. Mm. Janitorial, yeah. If it's open. Probably. Not sure. There probably would be. Okay. And as far as, so explain the, the central staff. And you said something about this included some additional technology. Uh, IT. Yeah. IT. So, so, for, so is that the main bodies or persons administratively that would be affected? I mean, all of them would be affected. Mm -hmm. They have bigger workload. Yeah. Well, I think we also talked about, for example, support with volunteer coordination, uh, scheduling, um, you know, that type of sort of administrative support. Um, also looking at some additional collection development support because right now, with the way uh, selection is being done, some of those staff may need to be redeployed to be serving on a service desk, for example. So some of the tasks, um, you know, if, if Medford was not open 40 hours, staff might have been able to do some of the behind the scenes work. If now when you're open 40, there's all that need to be out in front of the public, is what tasks do we need to make sure we're covering in that way? So some of the administrative positions is support for that type of thing. And that's included in, Correct. You, you included that in the half million dollar number. Exactly, okay. yeah. And that's in some ways sort of a, at a certain point, I wouldn't say a, a fixed cost, meaning if you were to get to 78, if all of a sudden you went beyond that, okay, now we need to reassess. But let's say you were in a certain range, if you dropped it down to 70, that may not change because you might have a, a full-time IT support person that can support up to 78 hours. Does that make sense? That, you know, it's, it, it really significantly dropped if you came back and said, we only want to add 40. Okay, maybe that would lessen maybe a half-time IT person, you know, but that, that infrastructure supports a certain level. Gotcha. Okay. What else are we going to see um, rather than beyond this? Because obviously there's going to be some administrative costs. Um, that are included in this figure somehow. Um, that not would just be IT. From, if the county, this would be from Ellen to Sci Sci yeah, for I'm adding for that, staffing and that's operations. What I'm talking about. So th for this, for oh, but but I think beyond like the utilities or janitorial, that no, would be. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about IT. I'm talking about staff that Kim will need to, uh, if, if she has to have increase to do things. We don't see that here. Is what I'm saying. It's included. That's what we're saying. This is everything that's needed to open 78 additional hours. I think Carol is looking for a greater level of detail, laying Absolutely. out these things and how the cost figures play into it, uh, how you get to the 500000 Somewhere there's a sheet that says, here's what each one of these little piece parts cost, and it adds up to $500,000. I think that's the level of detail Carol's looking at, and frankly, I would be at some point, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I just figured out it costs $6,410 an hour at the rate we're going to do this. And I feel like that, yeah, this is not, this is not what I would anticipate receiving to do a $500,000 increase in our budget. Um, it might be, I, I'm not sure what your calculation is. It would be 78 hours a week. So that would be times 52 hours, or 52 weeks in a year. I see, well, it would be t times six months. T t exactly, times 26 weeks. Yeah. So I, th I think yeah. it's, it's around maybe, what, 245 an hour? $245 which is, dollars an hour. Yeah, which is kind of similar to what... Thank you for mm -hmm. correcting me. I, I, in that range, I don't have the exact number, but it's, it's about that. Do you know how soon we will see uh, the more specific information about which, which hours how these hours are going to be distributed? Um, well, it's kind of the chicken and the egg. 
what, uh, yeah, we you know, know what, whether what, we're going to go that far to, to mm -hmm. decide. This is really helpful to have this, and so right. it would be nice to have another one with whatever you're going to do here. Well, they will when they figure it all out. <laughs> well, I know, but we don't know when we're going to get it. Well, if, if at today's meeting you say, yes, we want to go forward with the 78 hours, and the next step would, Kim, as she said, start all over and go back and re uh, lay out the hours, and would that be something by the next Well, time? But I think what Carol's oh. asking is they want that, that you want that now so that you can make a decision on whether you want to do this or not. Well, right? I, I think we need a little more than we have here is what I'm saying. If it's your, what you sit when you sit down with your staff and kind of figure out how you would distribute the hours, that will give us a clearer picture. Mm -hmm. um, if you're increasing in, uh, the IT people, and I've heard that from everybody that that needs to be done. As I've done my visits, <coughs> I think that would be you know an important thing for us to really have a clear understanding about. And uh, I presume that can be done. Lisa, this, was, okay. yeah, this is something that's come up since I've been here. It's uh, like any other contractor that contracts with Jackson County. Um, they give us a figure. We say this is what we need done. They give us a figure. We say great. You go do that. We don't ask them how many, how much they uh, purchase their custodial supply. Let's say John Smith, the custodian. We don't say how much do you purchase this mm -hmm. floor cleaner for. How much are you paying your, your staff? How much are you this? We don't ask them for that detail. In essence, we're doing the same thing with LSSI. We say, we have this much money. This is the service we want. How much is it going to cost mm -hmm. for this service? We don't ask for that detail. So, and so in our contract with LSSI, we don't ask for that detail. So because the contract is between the county and LSSI, you aren't going to get that detail. When, you, when the district board and LSSI enter into a contract and you do the negotiations and you want that detail, that's something you would work out with LSSI. Mm -hmm. I understand that. What I, what I am talking about really with Kim now is uh, on the ground having some feeling, because we've heard already from staff and from <coughs> the friends and the community about ours, how will this look when we when we apply the 78 hours um, and surely we can have that fairly soon well I think part of it, what I sort of play off a little bit of what Lisa was saying is is right now you have a, a contract with a professional library management company and so part of that is you know our hope would be when if the board were to say yes adding 78 hours is a priority um, is that's for the expertise of the staff that we have and the management to really, as you're right, as we lay out what would this look like, um, that we come back to you with the best recommendation. I mean, the, the board, I, I, it's, if the board were to say, yes, we want the 78 hours, then part two is knowing and having um, hopefully some confidence in our staff to be able to make the best recommendation. Um, it won't be a, a, a dartboard of add hours here or there. I mean, so then the next part is you've said yes on the 78 hours. Here's now our, final, our recommendation on what would be the best layout of those hours. And at, at that time, to respond to say, mm, is there a little bit of room for ebb and flow? But again, sort of that uh, logical reasoning of here's why, how we did the layer, the, the hour layout. Um, because the other the challenge is, if we want to deploy by January, um, there's a lot of decisions and things that need to come into effect. But if the board would like to, let's say, micro, uh, review the decisions at each step of the way. This may not be deployed until you know further into the spring. Which, if if that's your comfort level, absolutely. But you know, as Lisa has said, really one reason you hire a professional management company is to bring all these years of experience. You know, not only with the local staff, but as Kim said, you know, reflecting with other LSSI staff members to say what would make sense here. So, and we're happy to do it either way. It's just you know every time to to add length to decision would delay, you know, when we could possibly lay it down. So we're, we're, we're comfortable with either mm -hmm. option, whatever is we're most comfortable with. So I think what you're saying, Dana, is if we were looking, and I'm not putting dates on it, but a line of progression, mm -hmm. that the line of progression says, the district says, 78 hours is what we want. We would then essentially ask the county on our behalf, because of our contract, 
to negotiate providing that additional 78 hours and while that's being negotiated Kim and her staff will be looking at where and exactly how the 78 hours gets deployed and you know start looking at whatever hiring decisions are made etc mm -hmm. so the county negotiating with you and Kim's staff would be working kind of concurrently exactly. to do that in order that we could make a January timeline correct I agree with what you just it's said. Just, I'm just, I'm, 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 you know, at this at this point, um, I think then what we really ought to be discussing is, you know, are we comfortable in general and in concept with the with where these 78 hours are going to go in by branch, um, with the assurance that what we're looking at is a is a $500,000 proposal. Is $500,000 the number we want to go with? Are we still comfortable with that? We put that number out there, you know, fairly early. Um, is that a number we're still comfortable with? That, I think, is another question that we as a board have to answer at this point. And then if so, you know, we look at these hours and do we think that we're moving towards a model that makes sense? You look puzzled or... Okay. I mean, we also have to look at the cost of these hours as we go forward mm -hmm. past exactly. this year. Mm -hmm. um, so one would assume that it's approximately double for mm -hmm. next year, perhaps. Mm -hmm. With cost of living increase yeah. that would be embedded yeah. coming with the new contract. Do we have a timeline yet for starting the negotiations for the next contract that will start in the 1st of July? Um, normally, I mean, we can begin, you know, as soon as January. I think about 90 days out is, is typically the time frame that I can look at that. But knowing this is a, you know, a new board and some new things may be happening, you know, we, we can work with the board at uh, a timeline that's, that's uh, preferable to you. And, and because we're a different entity than the county, we're to take this on as ourselves versus doing the county, we'll have to go through an RFP process. Mm -hmm. which means that we would need to advertise and see if, I believe that they're the only vendor that offers this type of services, but we need to put it out there and and, mm -hmm. and that usually after you release your RFP, it's a, a 30 day waiting period before mm -hmm. the responses come back. And that process takes an additional month or more because you have to develop the RFP in front of the negotiating process. So, and, and it also would be a huge item in our budget, so you need to know that sort of before you do your budget. And so we should be working on it by January 1st, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And there may be changes in priorities, meaning more programming, or the things you want in an operating budget that aren't supported by grants, and having you know, that flexibility to change. This is what the service model is now, but, but there absolutely may be changes that we can respond to. And I heard one of the things that uh, because of how we're staffed now, sometimes when there is a grant, we're not able to uh, be flexible enough to, to provide the staffing to do the other part of the grant. Maybe it's two-thirds paid by someone else and one-third ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we've been so tightly staffed in the past that there wasn't any flexibility that you could take advantage of someone paying two-thirds of the bill. And I'm hopeful that that there'll be a little more flexibility in, in that we might be able to even have more grant funding in the, in the, in the future with a little bit more flexibility in on how we operate. That's true, and you might even add, for example, position specifically dedicated to grant development and, and writing and, and implementation. Well, I'm going to ask a real stupid question, and that is that if we said to you, let's spend $400,000, how many hours will that buy us? Um, that would actually mean going back and, and putting together a new proposal because, again, it's not so much of if you take two hours out of Medford, you might be able to add so many hours elsewhere. So we would go back. I, I think if you want to reduce it or if, you're, if your new total is, let's say, $400,000 as a tar target, um, what would be nice is feedback is to say, here's greater priority areas and here's less priority areas. So okay. if you were to say 400000 is our new one, 
we want Medford at this level. We want Ashland at this level. Here's the areas we have flexibility. We can absolutely we can configure this and come in and, and with few hours, but um, like I said, your average cost per hour, that takes into account sometimes a more expensive branch compared to a, a, a lighter one. So it would take a, a new assessment, but we can do that for you. Well, I made my priority list last night because I thought it was based mainly on circulation. So I already, I already did that. And um, uh, certainly Medford has to have at least 16 hours. 16? 16, 16 more hours. Additional. And I have other priorities as well, but, but it's it's not up to me to decide that. I mean, I think that's the full board's decision. But I made a priority list of what where I thought we had to to grow. And Bedford was first, Central Point was second, Jacksonville was third, White City and Phoenix I put in the same category in terms of of um, population. And prospect was next, but but um, I guess that's probably how I would work on it is to to set a priority list for the, for the board to set its priority list in terms of hours, if that would be helpful to anybody. From my point of view, I don't feel like that I'm an expert enough in library services, so I really would depend on them. Giving me that what the pro, you know what theirs were. Now, if we want to change this number from five hundred thousand dollars to another proposal, I would probably ask them to change their own priorities and just see what it came back and and, and be. Well, I certainly think that we ought to. One of the questions. I mean, we when we approved our budget, we approved a range of four hundred to five hundred. You've come in at the top end of what we we're looking at, um, I think one of the things we have to do is look at whether we want to commit to the 500000 this year with the idea that we're not going to want to ramp up and then decide that, no, well, that's too much, and then cut back mm -hmm. when we start the new contract in July. So I think we need to look at the 500000 and say, can we go that far? And then, if not, then we'd come back and say, well, we need to pare, pare down this proposal some way. You know, I know that when we made the decision to go to the $500,000 number, or it was 400 it was four to five. Yeah, four something five. like that. Mm -hmm. But the numbers at that time, we were <laughs> looking at the 60 cent levy, right. and we pulled back the 52 cent levy. Right. So, are you suggesting they maybe come up with one that's at four hundred thousand, just the same kind of information, and another one at five, and we talk about those? No, I'm okay. suggesting that we look at our budget and decide whether we can okay. stand five hundred thousand for this half year, and then roll it into the budget for next year. If we don't think we can do that, I mean, this is. It's a big chunk. This, well, it is, and I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying we need to look at that because it's it was at the top end of the possibility range that we were looking at, and I don't think this was a proposal that was lightly, you know, just slammed together. So, and it will need to be taken apart and redone. If I might have preferred to get a range of proposal, but since that isn't what we got. I think we have to look and decide whether we can afford this, and if not, ask them for a different one. And that's going to take time, but that's, that's, I mean, I think that's the next thing we have to look at, really. I might, might rearrange this a little bit, but I don't think it's a good thing right now for us to make, try to micromanage and say, well, we want two hours here instead of there. I think that's mm -hmm. a f foolish thing to try to do at this point. So my personal view is we should decide whether we can afford this proposal. If we can't afford this proposal, ask for it. Well, that, I thought I asked earlier what would a $400,000 proposal look like. 
in terms of these hours, how they would be arranged, and I don't think they had an, I didn't have any, you hadn't looked at that, right? Correct. I guess our understanding was the direction was to come up with a proposal if you had 500000 what will be no. the service priorities and what could you do with that? That wasn't the motion that we passed when we, when we gave, when we did it. We talked about a four hundred dollars to $500,000 range, and that was what we gave to the librarian in terms of the direction. I don't recall that. That's not what I recall. Well, that's okay. Listen to look, the, okay, we don't need to go. to the tapes. Okay. Uh, so what I'm hearing is the consensus about that we would, our, our process at this point was that we were to talk about it at this meeting, we're to have another work study session on it mm -hmm. on the 22nd. 22nd, and we haven't decided the time or the place of that, but we need to set that. And then our decision on this would be made in the first meeting in October with public input at that, that, mm -hmm. at that meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Is what we've talked about process? Yes. Okay. And are we in agreement that that process is still valid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so are we wanting them to bring out back an alternative or an additional proposal for us for the work study session? Yes. Is that the, the consensus? If, what are you feeling? Since I'm not going to be at that meeting, but I think that that's a good way to go. Okay. I think it would be nice to have options. Okay. So do we want them to do one approximately 400000 and one at 450000 and one at five hundred? Yes. Would that be, is that a lot of, no, we can add those three different levels, or do we just want to see one at a four hundred thousand dollars? I'm comfortable with four hundred thousand and five. We've got the five hundred. Okay. How are you? That would be right. Okay. We're so, so what we're really 000. asking is, what would it look like if it was a little bit less? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, knowing that we uh, have less tax revenue than originally. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any more specific questions about any one of these branches or any part of this proposal then? I don't think it makes sense to pick up the hours per grant. Okay, I, I don't either. Let me go back to my agenda then. Our next item on business, are we ready to go to the next item on the business then? But what was the timeline then on that? Well, can you have that for us by the 22nd? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then our next item is the library report by library director Kim Wolf. Great. So here's what we are doing now. Okay. <laughs> so you have the report, so I'm just going to go over some highlights. Um, we did launch the new website. I hope everybody's, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, it's a lot cleaner looking and um, it has uh, mobile, a mobile page and you can, it, it goes to, or you can use it on your tablet, your iPad and everything, and it scales to whatever device you're using. It, uh, it at first it, if you've been using the web page a lot, of course you have to get used to the new navigation. But we are um, taking input and tweaking it, you know, every day because there are some things that that we're hearing that definitely need to be changed. But but our main goal was to make it cleaner. Um, the navigation, rather than having five different links for the same thing on one page, just one link. The other thing we have is you can search the website. You used to be, you can search the catalog, which we've always had, of course. But you can also search the website. So if you're going through the website and you can't find something, you can go up to the right-hand corner and click search website, and you can try to find it through the website search rather than just the navigation. So take a look at that, and please um, give me any input if you have any. <laughs> we. Um, Upcoming, we have, we'll be at the Ashland Book and Author Festival. We're a co-sponsor for that. That's at the Hannon Library at SOU on September 20th. And that, it, there is an article in the paper, I don't know if you saw it the other day. Mm -hmm. Lots of authors and publishers mm -hmm. and just literary programs, workshops, and then the library will be there with the table so that we can have information about our services. 
We will also be at the Greater Medford Multicultural Fair uh, at Elbow Park. September 27th, and we, we've done that several years. We have a booth there and we have a children's craft. It's a big family event, and so we have a lot of people coming through, and um, it's got the fun activity, but then the information about library services. Um, if you're in the Medford Library anytime soon, we have the History Made by You exhibit, which uh, in partnership with the His Southern Oregon Historical Society, they do this this exhibit and this time it's about Butte Falls and it's two big cabinets at the top of the stairs and it talks about the history that one of the high school classes at Butte Falls and some other or community people put it together and it's just great. It talks about logging, homeschooling and the Butte Falls mill. So we're, uh, we're happy to be able to exhibit here. It's been in Butte Falls and it's been at the airport and then they move it around. Uh, another thing we're doing this month is the White City Family Fun Day, which is sponsored by White City Community Improvement Association, and we do one of the booths. And again, it's an opportunity for us to be out in the community, to be with those families and the, attend that event, and to let people know about our services. What day is? What time is that? That I I have a I I have to email it to you, Carol. I Thank have you. the flyer. It's on September 13th, I believe it's 10 to 4, but I'd have to check. Okay, thanks. Um, the thing that I forgot to put on here is that we will also be at the Southern Oregon Antiques and Collectibles Club the last weekend of this month, the 27th, I believe. We have a table there, and we've done that for years. The Antiques and Collectibles Club gives us um, books for our collection, and we have a wonderful collection of antique and collectibles books and materials. Uh, again, we're giving information about library services to that audience and we're also letting them know that we have information that they might need and it's a partnership that we have with the Antiques and Collectibles. And then we're also having a starting a series, it's the End of Life Forum series. It's a partnership with Providence Home Services and we'll be doing five or six um, presentations once a month at different libraries and it will be um, things like dementia. The, the main thing is carrying through the last stages of life and so there's one on pain control, dementia, end of life care, stroke, grieving families and so we will be holding those. I think they're one hour presentations starting this month but I'm not exactly sure of the time and the place of the first one. Um, and then, of course, we, we have our normal programming, our summer reading program wrapped up in August. I don't have the final statistics today, but I will report those at the October meeting. And uh, it sounds like we've had a really good summer reading program. We had many different programs and events, windows in time. Oh, we have a book a librarian. Um, program starting. It's at the Ashland Library where you can actually book a librarian for an amount of time to help you individually with uh, a computer need or a research need. We'll see how that goes and then hopefully that those are the kind of programming things that we hope that we can roll out at a later time so that we could have that in more branches. And then our friends groups are just amazing and, and co-sponsoring movies, author talks, book groups, teen programs, children's programs. And we're coming up on Grandparents Day, and actually we're going to celebrate it for at least a week and maybe a month, because it's <laughs> <laughs> so Yay. great. Yay, grandparents! <coughs> so, and w grandparents or grand others, we realize that there are grand others, they're not just all grand. <laughs> Um, we're, we did finish our fiscal year statistics with the June uh, report and that will be sent out to you. We're working on our state report for Oregon State Library and those are public library statistics. That's a state report that Oregon does and then those feed into national reports for library statistics. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we have had some staff turnover. The uh, Wendy Glimpse, our 
branch services manager um, resigned and had another opportunity. We will be hiring an assistant director in that place, and we um, we we will be able to give you some input into that. And, yeah. and Dana knows the pro LSSI's process for that. Um, you know, and, and sort of going back to again the contract. So we, although at that level, I mean, all of our the staff are LSSI employees. We definitely want to have that board feedback and input, especially at the higher level, professional level. For example, when we do a recruitment at a director or assistant director, and just to walk you through a little bit of the, of the process. So, um, whenever we have a vacancy, uh, we do an extensive recruitment, and especially if it's you know librarian level and above, this can be through all sorts of avenues, such as American Library Association. Um, through our personal connections on LinkedIn. Um, we're also very dialed into the alumni groups of the MLS programs. I'm actually an adjunct instructor at, at two of those, so have a good reach um, to that. And, and again, it can vary depending if it's an entry-level librarian to, again, a, a more senior position. Um, and as Kim said, in time as an organization, when we have a vacancy, we always look at, instead of necessarily hiring exactly what was there, I mean, that could be the right decision, but in talking about where are we growing, going with possible hour growth, responsibilities, we really felt like in Medford, or in um, Jackson County, we want to transition that to an assistant director level position. Um, and so we're reviewing some of the duties and things like that. So the process would be, um, we are currently recruiting. Um, we'll be narrowing down the candidate list. And normally, internally, we do a number of what we call panel interviews. And one nice thing about LSSI is, normally on, on your panels, you would not have somebody who could potentially be your boss, meaning you wouldn't have a branch manager on a, a panel for an assistant director. So in that case, Kim will be utilizing some of our directors around the U.S. to do, um, starting usually with the Skype type of panels. Um, then we move to a higher level, which includes some of our LSSI senior management staff. Um, and also at the assistant director level, Ron Deverly, our CEO, um, also meets with the candidate, usually virtually, um, because again, when we bring in somebody uh, at that level, they really are uh, joining the organization as a whole. Um, our HR is very involved in the background check, reference checks, all those pieces. So we, we start out a, a big candidate pool, keep narrowing, 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 and then normally what would happen is we'll bring the top one or two candidates to the board um, presents you with their credentials and at that point usually you know we're, we're very excited and again it could be one or it could be two candidates to say here's uh, the top people we would hire them tomorrow but again we'd like to introduce them to the board so um, and, and again I've seen scenarios where it comes down to one or two um, and, and we've taken to a lot of things into account from experience level where are they in their career growth cycle because sometimes you can hire somebody that's very comfortable and seasoned in that position, but a year later, they're ready to move on, meaning they, they're not challenged, they're not growing. And so I think as a company, one thing we really do try and look at is that, that sort of that sweet spot of experience where they're solid enough, we have confidence in what they can do, but we also know with a lot of mentoring support, not only by Kim, but also our entire staff, you know, can we help grow um, a person in a position? So a lot, a lot again, these factors go into a, to account. So, and, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering if you have a, I know from long experience that these don't always go according to your planned timeline, but do, how, do you, how do you see this proceeding if it went in an optimal sort of way? I would say in the next eight to 10 weeks, meaning we want to get through that first vetting, um, do interviews. Right now, we're, we're, I, and sometimes it can come in waves where Oftentimes, the first set of applications you get are people who are, are actively looking for a job. But oftentimes, too, we want to reach out to people who maybe aren't looking for a job and, and, and weren't aware of this opportunity. And that's where that, a lot of that personal outreach happens. Um, and so we want to kind of shake, shake those bushes as well to make sure we're getting both waves of candidates um, and to narrow down. So, But I, I would say you know, eight to 10 weeks is usually a, at this level about where we're at. And to follow up on that, we also have a branch manager position open that we're recruiting for that's in Central Point. Uh, we have a library assistant position open, and I've heard about a couple more retirements coming up. So we, you know, we've always got um, turnover, and especially with retirements, sometimes it ends up being a domino effect because we do want to be able to 
have our current staff be able to take advantage of opportunities that come up for them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, you have the domino, somebody's moving, and it ends up being five positions over time mm -hmm. to fill. So that is where we are, and any questions about the resource? Mm -hmm. Do we want to talk about our our agenda? We have set the day of September 22nd, I believe it's a Monday, mm -hmm. is that correct? Correct. So what time and where do we want that meeting to take place? Where, where are we touring? So the, if to do the tour, we were going to go to the branches that are open, Road River, Gold Hill, White City, and then um, I think we talked about coming back to Medford for this study session. Unless you want to go to another so it would be library. Would be, are you saying Rogue River, Gold Hill, and White City? Yes. And then the fourth library, we could come back here, or we could go to another library, at, like we did last time, and have the meeting at a fourth library. It's Is anything open that has a logical load? I, I believe logistically a room that can accommodate. I believe meeting. Phoenix might be open at that time. And the meeting is room is how they did. Oh, I know. Okay, there yeah. it's a back. I was the, uh, you I was know not there, but well, but it's similar to what Jacksonville is inside the meeting room. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, could we have it at Phoenix then? They're not open that day, right? They are mm -hmm. open that day. I'd have to check and see if the meeting room was available. Okay. My preference, just because then we would have had done four places to have it there, or do people want to come back here? Do we know about how long we think this will be? Because Monday evenings I start having commitments. Well, the first library, which would be Rogue River, opens at 10 a.m. Yeah. So it, I would think we would start at 9.30 to get to Rogue River be there at 10 and then move around like we did last time and we got to Central Point. So we get to Phoenix at 2-ish or, or by 3. I think we could, to, to be able to have Mark available, we need to have a meeting at 3. The later would be better for him. We could probably do 2.30 if need be. Three. Let's say 3 o'clock at Phoenix is our first priority, and but if it doesn't work out at being Phoenix, we would be back here. If you're looking perplexed. No. Okay. So I will check on that and email the board. That would be wonderful. Thanks. I just want to let you know, a lot of times I'll either be attending by Skype um, or in person. So it will vary, but at least okay. you see this is a real meeting, <laughs> and sometimes it will be on the screen. So. Okay. okay. Um, one of the things that I think that we ought to consider, and we could maybe put it on the next agenda, is do we, you know, we have scheduled the first Thursday of every month as a meeting. And because of the amount of work that we need to do this first year, do we need to schedule a second day of the month as a meeting? I think we need to have that discussion. We've now already had three or four special meetings, or you know, other meetings. And so it's obvious our work is more than what needs to be done once a month. And so I think maybe we need to think about having that. And maybe if we don't, maybe we just say if we have it, we'll have it on the third Thursday of the month and, and reserve that date so we don't have so much trouble trying to find the date. I don't know, we need to put, so can we put that discussion on next meeting? Okay. I think that's good. On the future, get, okay. Our next meeting though will be a work study session and we'll only be talking about the proposal, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. The following one I have that we would be having uh, both a financial report and a library report. Uh, Lisa and I have been going back and forth on the format of the financial report. And when we're talking about the financial report, we're not talking about the district financial report. We're talking about the financial report of the Jackson County operations, which is, they're virtually the same because we pay for that. But we wouldn't be approving that report because it's not our report, it's the county report. So we have to be a little careful on how we deal with the, the financial issues. May, may I uh, go back? I, I think we should have our meeting on the 22nd here, our study session, because you're going to last be in White City, and people who come to our meetings are more familiar with 
with us here at this location. And that would be my preference now that I've thought about it. Well, the reason that I s suggested Phoenix was one was we're, try we're trying to all go together, and that would be the fourth that we could. Then we will have not gotten to Phoenix. Oh, you mean the fourth library we would visit? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. I thought you had gone to that no, in your we last not. tour. Okay. No, no. All right. That's fine then. Um, then we uh, were to discuss the policies that we had a draft given to us mm -hmm. and then uh, make a decision on the amount of money and how we would request the LSSI amendment to take place. So that, that's what I have for the first meeting in October. Is there anything else that people are thinking needs to come before the board? Are we going to go back to these policies that were delegated? We, I mean, I've, we, sent, we gave a proposal, and uh, just floating to see if we were on the right track. I've had feedback from one person so far. But I, um, I am going to suggest that all of us get the feedback to her within, prior to our next meeting, if you haven't done it. Because that should go, because we really do need to go back to that. Right. Uh -huh. We should put, yeah, I mean, it would be nice right. to be able to move them forward. And it would be nice to have an idea whether we're sort of headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You think so. Not everybody may agree with you. Okay. We get feedback from everybody. So is there anything else that we see? We had divided into sort of three group working groups. There was the contract working group, the county uh, associate the independence issue, and a the policies. and the policies group. And so maybe the other two groups, because the policies groups will be talking to us on October 3rd. The other two groups could have a report at that time. And the LSSI is sort of dependent on this part anyway. Yeah. I'm Monica and I are on the right. The contract one, and we all pretty much, we both pretty much agree that if you mean if you looked at our mutual schedules, which were not mutual at all, that we really weren't going to start having our, any serious discussions until after October 1st anyway. So okay, uh, we may not have much, if anything, to report on at that point. Okay, so is there anything else that needs to come before the board? I think it's a good idea just to call on the committees for reports, and, and if there's no report, that's fine. But if they're on the agenda, then that takes care of it. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else to come before the board, we stand adjourned. Very good. Do you want to use a bureaucratic rule to that person? We actually did comment, and no one at that time there were a whole bunch of people who came in just after that, and so. I'll, Do you I'll want listen. to hear what this particular? I'll or I can. I'll listen. But okay. but the meeting is over, so you just have to know that it's over. But we'll listen. Well, if okay. You, do you want to be on record of having citizen participation or not? We are on record as having citizen participation. Yeah. Next time we'll be sure to be here at three minutes before instead of That's three minutes point. after That's a good to point. make sure that I don't get shut down. So, in any, as a general proposition, three minutes time for members of the public to comment isn't very much. Three minutes per, per person? Per person. If you really want to have actual, real, meaningful input, that's really not a lot. But maybe, I understand the mechanics of a meeting, mm -hmm. but if you really want to have transparency and public involvement, I think you need to be thinking about some mechanism where you can solicit actual, meaningful comment. For example, I heard the report from the LSSI person, and I heard a lot of sensible things there, but it's pretty dense and pretty complicated. But see, There's a lot of things to discuss in there. I, as a citizen, would like to be able to read that analysis so that I could think about it. And we're going to have it. that comment at our October 3rd meeting, specifically on that issue. Say again, please. Uh, the LSSI contract will uh -huh. become on our October 3rd agenda, and we will p have public input regarding that item as before we make our decision on the contract. And we're going to have another work study session on that issue as well. It is a big issue, and we're going to have to spend some time on it. Right. Okay. I, do you really want to have citizens 
putting stuff forward, or do you guys top down want to decide and then just give some kind of formality rubber stamp approval res uh, to the citizen? What, what is your general approach? We've accepted input from several citizens already with regard to ours. Uh, several of them have reached out to us via mail, email, telephone Absolutely. conversations, etc. Um, they've chosen not to use this public forum and they've used other ways, but we've had a significant amount of input already about what the public has been interested in. Also, the library staff has taken in quite a bit of public contact, uh, contact, contact as well um, and information from them. So, I mean, it, this has not happened in any kind of a vacuum or any kind of a top-down method. It's been full of public input just not input that's been chosen to be dis, um, to be delivered at one of our public meetings. And I've heard from every library myself about what their needs are, both from presence, friends groups as well as staff. If you want to make meaningful comment or have meaningful participation, it probably makes much more sense to present whatever information you have in writing rather than trying to do it verbally at a meeting. So that actually does make sense to me, but in order for me to actually give you good, good input, for example, there's a big issue about how we allocate the scarce resources of money. There's only so many dollars to allocate to each library. For me to give you meaningful in input, I would really want to know where you're heading from and be able to see that analysis, actually. Is that available to this, this, this LSSI proposal is a public record, okay. and you can look at that. I'm so where would I go to look at that? You can, if you want to make a copy of it for him yeah. before he leaves. Public record. But I also wanted to remind him that we will have a budget committee before we develop yeah. our yeah. own budget, yeah. and they will have many meetings, have and that yeah. will start probably soon after the first of the year, because we will appoint five people to serve on that committee to join us and it will be quite an involved process because we have a lot of work to do. Okay, so what was the answer on the analysis? Can I get a copy of that please? Yes. Okay, thank you. The document in the public meeting is there for the public. Yeah. Wait, let me just pull it off.